This penthouse that you're seeing here sits on a half plot of land, so 50 feet by 50 feet. Whereas my greenhouse sits on one plot of land, 50 feet by 100 feet. Can you guess how much it cost me to build this penthouse compared to the greenhouse? Now I'll tell you, it cost me almost 7 million naira to build this penthouse and about half that price to build the greenhouse system. Now most of the money to construct this penthouse went into building the German floor and the roof. By the roof, I mean the woodwork as well as the roofing sheet. That's where a lot of the money will go into when you're constructing a standard penthouse that has all these features, right? Now, how many pens do I have sitting on this one, on this half plot penthouse? I have a total of 117 individual pens sitting on this half plot, right? Now, if we are going by the ideal stocking density of Akatina Marginata, right, which is about 40 per square, per square meter for the adult Akatina Marginata snails and about 75 for the hatchlings. If we take an average, right, and then we estimate how many we can have in all these pens if we measure the individual areas of each pen, length times width. Right? The total is about 7,000 snails. So this pen house that I built here, that cost me about 7 million naira, can accommodate a maximum of about 7,000 Akatina Marginata snails. If you decide to obey the stocking density requirements. Right? Now, how many snails can I have in my greenhouse? which sits on one plot of land and cost me half the price, about 3.5 to 4 million, half the price roughly, to build. Now, I can, I, I can accommodate about 30 to 40,000 snails in this greenhouse compared to a maximum of 7,000 snails in this penthouse. Now, if... Hello, guys. So this is Michael here from Zenak Snail Farm. Today we'll be, I'm here in my penthouse so that we can discuss the key advantages and disadvantages of the penthouse system and the greenhouse system. So that budding snail farmers who, who want to invest into this business will have an idea what they are getting into you know, before investing their hard-earned money. Now, I am a proponent of both systems, that's both the penthouse system and the greenhouse system, as you can see over there. However, I believe that they both offer different things and I don't see any reason why you can't use them together if you want to. Now, let's start with um, the pen system. So, I'll open up one of my pens and comment on that so here I have my pen it's currently not stuck because I've decided to start off with the greenhouse and then to use the pen as my first expansion option eventually when I begin to struggle for space in there now what are the advantages I think the first advantage is accountability and by accountability I mean being able to know precisely how many snails you have at any one point in time so you know how many snails are dying each day how many snails are being born how many baby snails you have what the death rate is what the growth rate is or what the hatchability of your eggs is so you have the raw data you have record books you don't you're not you're not relying on estimates to make decisions secondly I think the advantage is um, care. So you, because you're monitoring the snails every day in each pen, 
you are able to identify which snails are struggling. Some snails tend to be very active and if on some days you come to check up on them and a snail that you've, you'd notice that used to be very active, you know, it's no longer active, then something is probably wrong with that snail. So you can identify quickly when a snail, when a particular snail is struggling and then you can isolate that snail into another pen that you've designated to be a hospital where you can give you know special care to snails that are struggling thirdly is the snails have less injury so when you have snails in the penthouse i've seen i mean when you have snails in the greenhouse i've seen some snail farmers build their greenhouse without a properly designated walkway in a walkway made with concrete or walkway that's made with interlock um, in my case some people use wood maybe hardwood so that it doesn't rot that although i don't think it's the ideal solution but at least it's something that you can work on without any possibility of harming the snails in the penthouse there's no possibility of stepping on those snails because remember snails some snails can dig into the soil to rest on a very hot day or on a day when they don't feel the air is as humid as they would like it to be also snails bury their eggs under the soil so imagine stepping on the soil when you're walking in the greenhouse that's for those people that don't have a designated walkway you end up you know crushing some of your eggs or some snails that are buried in there to rest so that's one advantage because the snails are inside the pen and you're not stepping well i hope you're not stepping inside the pen then there's no risk of damaging eggs or the snails also because the height from the pen cover to the floor isn't as much compared to the greenhouse the height from the top of the greenhouse to the floor is about 10 to 11 feet so imagine if a snail were to fall from that height it can be terminal for them it can be critical whereas in the greenhouse because you have the top of the cover and then mulch that's dead leaves on the top of the topsoil that can absorb the impact of the snail when they fall they are not as likely to get injured maybe they are crushing their shells so that's another advantage you have with the penthouse system. Now the fourth advantage is you have almost perfect shading because of the, the roof. So we both know that snails are nocturnal animals. They don't like too much light. They like places that are dark and humid. You know, so that's one of the disadvantage you have with the greenhouse because it's more exposed compared to the penthouse where they are perfectly shaded so these are the advantages of the penthouse system one you have accountability two you have more care three you have less injuries and four you have almost perfect shade for them now what are the disadvantages of this penthouse system one you have the issue of scalability which is the major limitation and I'll give you an example with my farm. This penthouse that you're seeing here sits on a half plot of land. So 50 feet by 50 feet. Whereas my greenhouse sits on one plot of land, 50 feet by 100 feet. Can you guess how much it cost me to build this penthouse compared to the greenhouse? Now I'll tell you. It cost me almost 7 million naira to build this penthouse and about half that price to build the greenhouse system. Now most of the money to construct this penthouse went into building the German floor and the roof. By the roof I mean the woodwork as well as the roofing sheet. That's where a lot of the money will go into when you're constructing a standard penthouse that has all these features right now how many pens do I have sitting on this one on this half plot 
penthouse. I have a total of 117 individual pens sitting on this half plot, right? Now, if we are going by the ideal stocking density of Akatina Marginata, right, which is about 40 per square per square meter for the adult Akatina Marginata snails and about 75 for the hatchlings. If we take an average, right, and then we estimate how many we can have in all these pens if we measure the individual areas of each pen, length times width, right? The total is about 7,000 snails. So this pen house that I built here, that cost me about 7 million naira, can accommodate a maximum of about 7,000 Akatina Marginata snails. If you decide to obey the stocking density requirements, right? Now, how many snails can I have in my greenhouse, which sits on one plot of land and cost me half the price, about 3.5 to 4 million, half the price roughly, to build? Now, I can, I, I can accommodate about 30 to 40,000 snails in this greenhouse compared to a maximum of 7,000 snails in this penthouse. Now, if your ambition, right, is to hasten to quickly recover the money that you invested to reduce your, the time it takes to, to, to recoup your investment, if that is your aim, if that is your objective, which one of these systems will help you to recoup your money faster? I mean, clearly, it's the greenhouse system, right? It will take you a lot longer to recoup your investment with the penthouse system. Now, if you are going to scale up, let's say that your farm has entered the exponential phase. By exponential phase, I mean hashability rate or the rate at which newborn, new baby snails are being born far exceeds the rate at which your snails are dying. When you get to that point, we say that your farm has entered its exponential phase. When your farm enters this phase, you begin to look for room to expand into, right? Now, if you want to expand your business, which one makes more business sense? Is it one that you spend seven million to build that can only accommodate, that can only accommodate about seven thousand snails? Or is it one that you spend half of that to build and can accommodate five times the size. Which one makes more business sense to expand with? Clearly, it's the greenhouse system. It's not the penthouse system. And that's what I mean by scalability. It's difficult to scale with this system. Now, the second disadvantage of the pen system is that it is labor intensive. And what do I mean by labor intensive? The fact remains that every day you have to come in to feed them. You have to come in to remove the leftover feed from the pre previous day so that they, they don't decay and increase the chance of your snails catching any disease or whatever. You also have to till the soil gradually, subtly, gently, so that you can unearth the, uh, the, the eggs that were buried in the soil so that you can isolate those eggs and put them in a separate pen that you've designated as your incubator. This is a special pen where you bury the snails. You bury the snail eggs and then label the date when those snails were buried there so that roughly a month later, you can go there to check how many of them have hatched. All these things require you to bend. You have to bend to collect all these things and not just for one pen. You have to do it for every individual pen you have here. Now imagine the long-term impact on your waste from always bending to feed them, bending to clean the pen, bending to collect to recycle the soil in all these pens every three or four months, bending to collect to recover eggs, bending to then 
bury those eggs in your incubator pen. That's a lot of stress on your waist. Right? Now, I, I, I applaud people that practice their pen system because it, I, I, I agree, it takes a lot of hard work and perseverance to do it. However, I don't brandish the people that practice the greenhouse system as lazy people because at the end of the day, it's all about choice. It's all about choice. If you have the option to travel from Lagos to Abuja in a bicycle, in a car, or in a plane, if you have the financial means, which one would you choose? Some people will still prefer to travel in a car, right? while others will prefer to travel in an aeroplane so they can get there faster. It doesn't mean that the people that prefer to travel there in a car are better than the ones that prefer to go there in a plane. It's just a matter of choice. Everyone has different metrics, different, trend, different objectives, different investment plans or aims or objectives that drive their decision-making process. Like I mentioned before, most people that go with the greenhouse system are more attracted to scalability, right? To return on investment. They are more attracted to having, to reducing the amount of time it will take them to recoup their investment so that they can invest in other business opportunities, right? They may not have the time to be giving the snails all the care they want in all of these individual pens, right? They would rather their money do more. They would rather they achieve more with the money they have. They don't want to invest seven million building a penthouse and only having 7,000 snails. When they can invest that same seven million to build two greenhouses and have about 60,000 snails. I mean, think about it. Which one will make you a millionaire faster? I think it's very clear. Now, what is the third disadvantage of this pen system? It's that it's, it, it's not the natural habitat of the snails. It doesn't replicate the snail's natural habitat. Snails are found, giant African snails are found mostly in the forest, in the rainforest, where they are free to roam about. Snails are curious creatures. They like to explore their surroundings. And when you cage them, inside this pen system they are now totally reliant on you for everything right whereas in the forest if they are sick they know which grass or vegetable or herb to eat to recover their health right if they feel like eating sweet potato leaf today they will eat it if they feel like eating one of the fallen purple fruit they will eat it if they feel like doing anything, they will do it. But in the penthouse, they are totally reliant on you for everything. Right? Now, how would you feel if you were put in a room your entire life? You're not allowed to go out. Just be in that room. Then they will provide you with all you need. All the food you want. All the video game you want to play. Everything they will provide you, but you cannot leave that room. How would you feel as a human being? Of course, I mean... I don't know about you, but I'll feel miserable. It doesn't matter if, I, if, if that room is paradise. I still want to go out and explore my surroundings. I don't want to be stuck in a room all my life. So it doesn't replicate the snail's natural habitat. That's another disadvantage. Another disadvantage is that it is less automated, right? Because the snails are stuck in this pen system and they are reliant on you for everything. Somebody has to be present on this farm, tending to your snails every day. Either you or your workers. Now, we all, we've all had our experiences with farm workers. It's very difficult to find a farm worker that will be as dedicated as you, the owner, because you are invested. The farm worker, on the other hand, is not invested, right? So, it'll be very, very difficult to find someone that will care for the snails as well as you want them to. I mean, they may pretend to care when you're looking, when you're watching, but as soon as you look the other way, they don't care. It's all about clocking in, clocking out, and taking their paycheck. That's that.
okay now if you're doing it yourself you're locked down you're tending to each and every snail in each and every pen in this thing you know how many hours it would take to replicate this process so you feed them you remove the leftover feed you gently turn over the soils to recover eggs that have been buried there and then you go to your incubator pen to bury those eggs imagine doing this for a whole 117 pens how many hours will that take out of your life time that you could invest doing other things so it's it's very limiting that's what i can say so that's it i've given you the facts i'm not saying that one system is better than the other i'm saying that they offer different things and it's now up to you to choose what you want to do with this information these are facts they are not my they are not necessarily my opinion they are facts on the ground and it's now up to you as a discerning investor as a discerning farmer to look at it objectively and choose which system you want to practice okay i wish you the best with your snail farming journey and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and i'll reply as soon as possible if you found this useful please kindly like this video share and don't forget to subscribe to this channel have a lovely day